Right guys, welcome back to MK Sports Cars and Kit Car Direct. Well, it's workshop walk time again, and the good news is spring is just around the corner. Fantastic news in about a week's time, the clocks go forward, the sun starts shining. So guess what, it's time to dust off those cars, get them ready, get them out in the garage, get them ready for driving on the road, sending them out on track. Now also, if you're ready to build one, you feel like you're handy with the spanners, with the tools, you wanna to get in with the family, with your friends, etc., and mix it up, don't forget to hook us up on a phone call or an email. Speak to Andy here, the links are down below, are they gonna be hit down there below? Gonna be down below there for you, and we can talk you through the process. So that's it guys, let's get into the workshop. Right, here we go, let's start off with this. It's Indy Classic R1 Turbo Time. It's a 5PW engine. I think I've said carburetor before, it's not, it's fuel injection. My brain doesn't work sometimes, but it's fuel injection. The very early first starts of the fuel injection. Uh, the remit on this when it came in was to get it tidy, get it ready for MOT, had a state of problem. So the guys, basically Adrian, had to real ball out to get the stator out and it was fixed in. If you subscribed, you'd have remembered you'd have seen it. It was a pain in the neck to get out. So that what we've been doing, Adrian's been checking out, we said some electrical tidying up to do under here, under the bonnet, and then checking the voltage on the car, making sure it's charging, etc. So that's been done. We've also then been through the exhaust here. This has gone in, the exhaust system's been in. Um, we've taken it out and we've repacked the silencer. So we've had a bit of that to do. We've got some tidying up we did in the centre tunnel, which is putting the handbrake gator in, tidying it all up, making it all neat, neat and tidy. And then just going through the car, making sure that everything electrical works and no splits, seals, etc. MOT standard, basically. So yeah, she's been down the road. We've had a little drive out, just up and down. It's been a bit rubbish to weather, as you know, snowing and all kinds of things going on. So it's been a bit tricky, but in between the dry spells, we haven't given this a little blast up the road um, to make sure she stops, starts and goes and ready to send off for her MOT now. So yeah, looking forward to that. So this is Guy, springtime, getting it ready and out in the sunshine. Right, well, it's cup car time. Something you may have seen if you follow socials, etc., is the Cup 200 race series, which is starting April 15th um, with the 750 Motor Club. This is cup car, I think it's number six, actually. Car 88, it's a Rich Red's car at RLM Racing. It's down here with us. We're just going through some processes and helping him and supporting him because he's out building more cars. So we're taking over the last final stages because this one's going to be completely road legal. So we're doing some modifications to it while we're down here. One of the little jobs to do is emissions. So the guys have been on with that. Going through the process there of tuning it for emissions, which came down, went through the process and under here. This one has actually got a, a high booster engine in that you know. Um, we've got the air box on here as well. We can run an air box with these angular uh, throttle bodies, which makes it a little bit quieter for induction noise, especially if you're doing track days or etc. Trying to keep some of the noise limits these days can be tricky. So an air box does help. That's a couple of horsepower, but hardly anything, hardly noticeable, really, to be honest with you. So this car, we've got the bulkhead off because we was doing some uh, final bits in here. And then, yeah, we're going to go through the whole process in here. Really nice, clean, as you'd expect from Rich, uh, RLM and Atomic Racing. It's in the Atomic Blue, which is great. It's having the headlights on it, it's having the all rear lights. So it's going to be a race car for the road. You'll be able to drive this to the track, race it and drive it home, as long as you don't have any coincidence. But really super tidy build. All the interior in this car is spot on. It's got our carbon fibre uh, material uh, centre tunnel. It's got the AIM dashboard, switch gear, boot cover carbon, seat pads, branded six point and four point. It's, it's the bizzo, absolutely the bizzo. It's got all the nice bits on it. 200 plus horsepower, six speed sequential glue box, what more do you want? But yeah, cup car, getting ready for IVA. Right, TS Dominator time, we're on with this. As you know, we've done the paddle shift to gear stick change system on it. And what we did was obviously, during the dry spells that we had, a little gap in the weather, gave it a quick test up the private roads here to make sure she goes through all six gears nice and smoothly. It's always difficult because you wanna make sure. So right, testing it in here, getting it out in the pavement there. Checking it out, that's all been good. That's the bag off. Hey, beautiful. Right. Oh, so that's really smooth. Super happy with that. Changes gear actually really crisp. It's British touring car style, as I would say. Boom, boom, boom. Lovely. Um, the other thing job to do was a speedo, which after, which we've got around here, 
Um, after going through and plugging it all in, we found that uh, this particular sensor was at fault. This was on the front wheel on this particular one. So uh, this sensor was faulty. And we've put a new sensor in, in there. We've put, um, unfortunately, some magnets, uh, etc. So we've had to glue them on. We've got to test that, let that dry. We do it with some aerodite, etc. There's many formats you can do it in, but yeah, stick the magnets on, make sure that the dimple is the right side down on them so you get the speedo sensor, but that's all done and all calibrated. So when you crank this up and the digi dash comes up, etc. a nice little bit of kit. Um, they work really well. Um, and then he'll be able to have his gear number because what he didn't have was the gear position number, which in a bike engine is a little bit frustrating on track. It's nice to see a big number that tells you one, two, three, four, five, or six, and that makes life easier. So it's going to help him on track. The gear leader is going to help me on track as well. So he'll be ready for springtime and getting this out on the black stuff. Right guys, new development stuff, which we spoke about a week or so ago, which was lowered floor pans. So normally the chassis pretty commonly fits the floor pan at the bottom here, straight across the chassis. And we've had quite a few inquiries about, can we do a lower floor pan option with taller drivers, etc., giving you more leg room, more head room, all of those scenarios, unfortunately, for the vertical skin challenge like me, it's not a problem, but anybody who's six foot five, six foot six, six foot seven, etc., they do struggle in their cars. But we found a solution that works for it. So this is the new lowered floor plan. Uh, pretty simple idea, I suppose, really. What we've done is got these bent up into shape <clears throat> and I'll show you one in the vehicle here. I'm going to put that down. And we've got it one side in and one side not it's to show you what we've done and how we've done it. This is our version, others have done it a different way. But what we wanted to make sure is not just stepping the floor pan in, we want to make sure that the seat runner bases are still in there so we've got strength in the seat still. So the floor pan sits in here, as you can see, and that is 50 mil drop. So it's quite, a, quite it doesn't sound like, but it's actually quite a lot uh, in terms of when you're sitting in the vehicle, giving you more leg length and everything else. But we still retain these two bars here and it sits on top of these. So all your weight is not just on the alley floor or on the rivets, it's actually on these bars as well. So structurally, if you're, you know, if you're six foot seven, six foot eight, you know, you probably might be 16, 17, 17 stone sort of thing. It's a fair old mate, just on alley floor pans. Not happy about that. The two bars are in, the seats bolt through that. So it spreads the load across the whole floor pan as well. So floor pans are going in. It is only an option on the Ford Bay chassis at the moment. And there's a reason for that. Ford Bay chassis, this area, the rectangle, is very even squares. So it's very easy to make that particular product in the sense of fitting it into the vehicle. The Mazda base, which we are working on, but it's gonna take a while, you know, we've got many things on the agenda, but the Mazda base ones, isn't square. So this is how we do a Ford one, square, like you see here, right away through the process. But in the Mazda one, where the diff is offset center, this corner is kinked in completely different in this corner, uh, which is this corner on this chassis here. As you can see, this one's dead straight, and then the Mazda one kinks in at an angle. So that means a bit more intricacy trying to design, folding, welding, and etc. of a floor pan, not as simple as making a square. So we can probably do it. It's not that we can't do it, it's just it's on the radar, but there's so many, so much development work we can do on at the moment, if any one time, when we've got well, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chassis on the go at the moment that we've got to get out to customers as well. So, but that is on the agenda. But for now, Ford, if you're looking for that, come in, just give us a call, have a look at it, or speak to Andy. Andy's here as a new guy in the sales team, uh, supporting you guys out there as well. He'll be able to talk you through the process and about what it's all about. So yeah, lower floor plan, tick box. Right, here we go, uh, paddle box time, guys. Well, we just showed you the lowered floor pans for the bigger and taller people, which will help out. Now, talking about pedal boxes, you're worried about, well, I've got big feet, I'm a tall guy as well, so can I hit the brake and accelerate? Well, the good thing about this pedal box is there is adjustment in it, so you can move the pedals. Now, at the moment, get a tape measure, trusty tape measure, we've got roughly around 50 mil between there, brake pedal and the clutch pedal, and roughly about the same 50 mil on the accelerator to the brake pedal. Now what you can do is take these out, these unscrew here and it's bolted behind and then you can move the clutch pedal to the other side. There you go, new holes, moved across, you've gained a bigger gap already here so if you wanted to move just the clutch pedal that's now gone up to roughly 65 mil so we've gained 15 mil. We can then move the brake pedal across as well we we'll do the same again, put it in the other hole in here, move that back now, at the moment, we should get back to roughly 50 mil, but now, instead of 40, 50 mil here, I've got 65 mil 
between the brake pedal and the accelerator. Now, other scenario is, we could do the same with the accelerator pedal with clearances, and this can move across as well. So I've just got to unscrew this because it's slightly different. Whoops, <laughs> he's alive. So there, we put that back in there. We'll just screw that back in and we get a measurement for you to see what the difference is between the two. So now we've got somewhere in a region of 75 mil. So if you've got a larger foot, you can move the pedals around dependingly on these holes, depending on your foot wheel clearances, but at least it gives you an option to basically move the accelerator, move the brake and move the clutch. Secondly is they also go up and down. You've got about a 10 mil drop between the two. So again, if you were to the foot, you could actually raise these up higher. Um, the accelerator doesn't do that, unfortunately, but the brake and the clutch do have a slide mechanism on there as well. As you can see, they're nicely slotted here to do that. So yeah, I think that's another box ticked for the bigger feet. Right guys, it's that time of the week where it's chassis register time. Where are you in the queue? Or if you want to get yourself in the queue, you know what to do. Hook us up, phone call, email, come down this at the factory and see Andy. But if you're in the queue already, you're up on this side this week. So yeah, what we're talking about events that are coming up. Don't forget open date. It's less than two weeks away now for April 1st. Yes, it's not a joke. April 1st, Saturday, April 1st. Fingers crossed the suns will be shining. We've got the Porsche uh, Owners Club down here for the day as well. Looking forward to that, to showing you, have a walk around here, tea, coffee, biscuits, etc., and see what's going on. Check out some of these awesome cars like cup number two. That's it guys, don't forget the like button, share button, and subscribe, and we will catch you next week.